The Elden Ring Remembrances are items you can get off the major bosses in this game, and you can either consume these for a bunch of runes, or better yet, you can trade them in to Enya at the Roundtable Hold to acquire one of two different items. Now for today, I'm actually going to go over every single one of these Remembrances and tell you which is the best option to go with, because you actually only can get one Remembrance at a time, unless you do duplicate them at the Walking Mausoleums, but there are only seven in the game for 15 total Remembrances, so you still have to be careful as to which one that you do pick. Now this is kind of going to be like a two-part video, I'm also going to rank all of these Remembrances as well, but the ranking is going to be based on how important it is to duplicate. So if there's a Remembrance that actually has two really good items, you'll probably want to duplicate it. And then it will just end up being higher on my list. And if there's a Remembrance where it actually has one good option and one really bad option, then the priority of duplicating it is not going to be that high and it will just end up lower on the list. But anyway, let's just get into it. To start off with, we have the Remembrance of the Omen King. Now this one is acquired off Morgoth and to trade it in, you actually will either get the Morgoth's Cursed Sword or the reusable tool, the Regal Omen Ban. Now the reason why this one is going to be at the bottom is because this is going to be the last Remembrance that I actually would duplicate because the Morgoth's Cursed Sword is just a much better option and it is not even close. This is a curved greatsword that does get some passive bleed, it gets the most amount of range in its class, and it also does away the least. And it's not like it actually has like less damage as a trade-off, the damage is still really good, you get a decent dexterity and arcane based scaling, meaning you can actually go into a bunch of arcane to just further improve the blood loss put up. Its weapon skill, Cursed Blood Slice, is extremely high damaging. Not that long of an animation and can proc bleed extremely quickly, can stun lock smaller enemies. The only problem with it is that it is going to be closer range and it does consume a total of 40 FP, but for the amount of damage that it does do, it definitely is worth it. But yeah, as for the Regal Omen Ban, these are just one of the tools in the game and tools are just terrible. They just all do such terrible damage to the point where it's just never really worth using. Now I know there might be some specific uses with this thing in PvP for invasions, but for 99.9% .9 of the game, this thing is just useless. Now the second least important Remembrance to duplicate is going to be the Remembrance of the Fiery Giant. Now this actually does contain the Giant's Red Braid Whip and the Burn O Flame Incantation, of which the Burn O Flame Incantation is just going to be the better option by a lot because this thing actually can output a lot of damage. Every single one of those pillars can hit very hard, can actually send smaller enemies flying into the air, doesn't really consume much FP, you can actually fully charge it to just further enhance the damage. Now for me, I think this spell is kind of outclassed by Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike because more enemies are weaker to lightning damage, Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike can go further, there's no RNG involved where Burno Flame projectiles are just scattered around randomly. And it has a shorter animation as well because Burno Flame does require you to like finish the animation for all of those pillars to come out, where Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike doesn't really work that way. But obviously, they're both going to have their own specific uses. Burno Flame does yeet enemies up into the air, and if you're fighting enemies that are weaker to fire damage, Burn of Flame is going to be the better option. But the reason as to why I think this is a clear cut winner is because Giant's Red Braid is a terrible weapon. It's a whip, which is going to be one of the worst, if not the worst weapon class in the entire game. They get like straight sword damage, but they're like really slow. They get terrible movesets. There's no variety in the moveset. They get some of the worst stance damage in the entire game. Even daggers can get more stance damage than this. They can't do critical attacks. The only thing they really have going for them is going to be their range. But if you want something that has nice range, just use like a spear or a great spear, that is going to be way better. But on top of all of that, the Giant's Red Braid is especially trash because its weapon skill is like one of the worst unique skills in the entire game. Flame Dance for 25 FP, you do this stupidly long animation that you can only cancel at the first and last part of it. So that entire middle part, you can't cancel it. You're doing terrible damage in the meantime. You're doing next to no stance damage. You also get no hype armor, so you can get staggered out of it pretty quickly. And also the Magma Whip Candlestick is kind of like a very similar weapon skill, but just performs way better because it consumes less FP. You can cancel it after every swing and it does like twice as much damage. The only thing that the Giant's Red Braid actually does do better is stun lock smaller types of enemies. You can actually get the whole combo just guaranteed, but the damage is like that bad to where I would just rather use like anything else. The Remembrance of the Lick Dragon is acquired of Fortisax. And this Remembrance actually does have two different types of incantations, Fortisax's Lightning Spear and Death Lightning. And Fortisax's Lightning Spear is just going to be the much better option. It is a pretty solid short range incantation, consumes 35 FP, which can be pretty high, especially alongside its 46 faith requirements. But the damage output and the stance damage is actually extremely good. You basically become airborne, get a bunch of hype armor, and you slam two whole spears to the ground that both can output a lot of damage and in total can do upwards of 40 stance damage. And upon slamming it onto the ground, not only is it going to do amazing damage, but it also does have a little bit of a shockwave AOE effect, so it actually can hit multiple enemies at once pretty nicely. Now due to its longer animation, 
It is going to be a bit more situational against most bosses. You're probably just going to get hit a whole bunch, but it still is very solid. But the reason as to why it's going to win is because Death Lightning is one of the worst incantations in the entire game. This thing shoots out a bunch of these random lightning projectiles that hit basically nothing. It has like the worst hit detection out of like any spell I've ever seen in my entire life. I've literally missed more times than I'm actually hit with this thing. And when you do connect with it, the damage isn't even that great unless you have like perfect RNG to where every single one of those lightning strikes hit. And even if that's the case, Ancient Dragon's lightning strike does just outperform it because it does more damage. There's no RNG factor. It goes much further. It has less requirements and it only takes up one slot. Death Lightning takes up two whole slots. Now, the only positive thing I can say about Death Lightning is that you could just use it as an alternative to Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike until you get it because you can acquire this earlier in the game. But even then, I'd still would never really want to use it. The Remembrance of the Regal Ancestor. This one is acquired off the Regal Ancestor Spirit boss. And it does give you the option of having the Winged Great Horn, which is a great axe, or the Ancestral Spirit Horn Talisman. Now, this is basically the only remembrance of which I might just recommend just consuming it for runes, because both of these options are just terrible. There's probably like very specific circumstances of which you probably would want to use these, but even then, I probably wouldn't really recommend it. But that's like the reason why it's not going to get at the bottom. It's because they kind of both have a specific use. The Winged Great Horn is a weapon that's just a regular Great Axe, Gets regular damage, average moveset, average range, nothing too special. Its weapon skill is Soul Stifler, which actually does debuff enemies to make them take 10% more damage. Which, like, it sounds pretty cool if you just want the debuff itself. But I'd rather just use a weapon that actually has a higher damaging weapon skill. Because weapon skills in this game are just amazing. They can output so much damage. So having one that just debuffs enemies is kind of useless. Especially because it doesn't damage enemies. If the AoE actually does some damage over time, I'd probably like it a lot more. But for me, the only use of the Winged Great Horn is going to be to use it to actually debuff an enemy and then switch to an actual good weapon. So for that reason, I'm probably gonna go with the Winged Great Horn as the option of which I would go for because the Ancestral Spirit Horn is a talisman that gives you three FP for every single kill, which that is basically nothing. I don't know why this wasn't just passive FP regen over time, like one FP per like two seconds or something like that. That would have been way better because for only three FP for every kill, it's such a small amount that you're just not even gonna notice at all. Especially when most spells in this game consume like around about 20 FP, it's pretty useless. The Remembrance of the Dragon Lord, which is acquired off Dragon Lord Placid Dusax, does give you the option of either the Dragon King's Craig Blade, which is a heavy thrusting sword, or the Placid Dusax's Rowan Incantation. Now, the Dragon King Craig Blade is this obviously going to be the much better option. It's a heavy thrusting sword, so it gets an amazing moveset, it gets a nice range, good stagger potential, and its weapon skill, Thundercloud Form, can actually output some of the highest stance damage in the entire game. When fully charged, that cloud can actually tick for a whole bunch, come crash into the ground, and do a whole bunch of damage. And the entire combo can do roughly 69 nice stance damage. Now, it's still not going to be like my favorite heavy thrusting sword, because the animation can be pretty long. You do get infinite hype drama, so you're basically never going to get staggered out of it, but you're you're still going to take a bunch of damage in the meantime. It also doesn't get boosted with things like the Millicent Prosthesis or the Godfrey's Icon. If it did, I would like it so much more because the damage itself isn't really that great. The stance damage is definitely the best thing about it. And obviously you have to be at point blank range just to connect with it. And due to its like longer recovery animations, you can actually trade out a whole bunch, but it still is an amazing weapon to have. But the main reason as to why it's going to win is because Placid Dusax's Ruin is incredibly mid. It is very fun to use. You can actually output a lot of damage. The initial Shockwave AoE can actually serve as a nice crowd control type of spell. And if you just land the entire combo of that laser attack, you can just definitely decimate an entire room full of enemies. But the problems with it is that one, it takes up three slots. It consumes 62 FP. You get no hype drama. So as soon as you get hit one time, you can just collapse straight to the ground. And it isn't like the easiest thing to aim as well. So this is definitely going to be one of those more like situational types of spells. But if you just wanted to pick it up because you just find it to be really cool and fun, then it's probably not going to be the worst one to duplicate. Number 10, we have the Remembrance of the Full Moon Queen, which is acquired off of Renala. And this Remembrance actually does give you either the Carrion Regal Scepter or the Renala's Full Moon Sorcery. Now, the Carrion Regal Scepter is, is going to be my pick here. This is going to be the best staff to have once you meet the minimum requirements, which is 60 intelligence, which can be pretty high. So it's mainly going to be like an end game type of stuff, but it is just going to be the best one. Unless you're using the Lusat's Glintstone stuff, this one actually can outperform it in terms of damage, but it does make you consume a lot more FP. So if you actually want to be more FP efficient and not have to constantly drink your FP flask, then the Karen Regal Scepter is just going to be the best option. It also does get a pretty cool weapon skill in Spinning Weapon. Can actually clean up some trash mobs pretty nicely, although Carry and Slicer just works better. Now, the alternative option for this Remembrance is going to be Renala's Full Moon Sorcery. Now, this spell is actually very useful. It actually debuffs enemies to make them take even more magic damage, makes them take roughly 10% more damage. 
And if you have an intelligence based build, you're gonna be using a lot of magic damage. So this is actually gonna be a pretty good option. Now, the reason as to why I don't really care to duplicate this one and why it's gonna get lower on my list is because there is a spell that kind of works the exact same way in Rani's Dark Moon. Now, yes, this spell is actually acquired later in the playthrough, but both of these spells have very high requirements. So you're not gonna be really using them early on anyway. Now, Rani's Dark Moon basically works the exact same way. It debuffs the enemies to make them take 10% more magic damage. The difference is being is that this one has a little bit less requirements, consumes a little bit more FP. It does less damage in total, although the damage is like very negligible. It's like 3% damage, but you don't really use this spell for damage anyway. But the reason as to why I would like to use it more is because it also does frost buildup. It does upwards of like 270 frost buildup, which is very nice against a lot of different bosses, you might be able to proc it in one hit. And obviously if you end up procking the Frostbite, enemies will just end up taking even more damage. So yeah, although the Renala's Full Moon is very good, I just consider Rani's Dark Moon to just be better. Number nine, we have the Remembrance of the Blasphemy, which is acquired off Rykard. Gives you the option of either Blasphemous Blade or Rykard's Rancor. Now, obviously, Blasphemous Blade is going to be the best option. This is probably one of the best, if not the best weapon in the entire game. It does lots of damage, has good scalings. It's a great source, so it has a nice moveset. The weapon skill can heal you, do a lot of damage, goes really far, goes through enemies, knocks them back, sends them flying. When you get a kill, you get even more health back. It's really good. Now, as for Rykard's Rancor, I want to like this spell, but I don't. Now this spell actually does have the benefit of being a sorcery and actually doing a fire damage, which is pretty unique. Now my problem with it is that there are other types of fire sorceries in this game that are just gonna perform way better in terms of damage and consistency. Rykard's Rancor can actually just melt a whole bunch of bosses. Unfortunately, it requires for those bosses to just be like completely still because how this spell works is that you shoot out this projectile and it explodes like after a few seconds and it just continuously like explodes throughout this entire animation. So it takes a long time for you to actually maximize the damage. Now the spell is actually not gonna be that expensive. It's only like 20 FP. So you can just keep spamming it over and over again. But against more mobile enemies, you're basically gonna hit nothing with this. And combined with the fact that it does take up two slots, does have a 40 intelligence and 18 faith requirement, I'd much rather use something like Magma Shot that can just do some nice damage, go very far, quick animation. It's just much more consistent, but it still has the use of doing fire damage. The Remembrance of the Grafted is acquired off Godric, and trading it in will either get you the Axe of Godric or the Grafted Dragon. Now, both of these weapons are very mediocre, but they're kind of like the same tier of mediocre, hence why they're not going to get at the bottom of this list, because they might actually end up being one of the ones that you want to duplicate. Now, for me personally, I'd probably rather go with the Grafted Dragon, purely because it has the better weapon skill, but it's still not going to be that good because it's a fist weapon that you can't even two-hand. Fist weapons are actually really good, but it's because you can two-hand them and do a power sense combo. With this thing, you're just going to leave it one-handed the entire time. It also gets the least amount of range. But yeah, the best thing about it is going to be its skill. Bear Witness is actually incredibly cheap and actually can output a lot of damage. The animation isn't even that long. You can just quickly roll out of it after you're done using it. Now, the downside of this is that you have to be at point-blank range. You can't really be that far away. But the damage to FP ratio is actually really good and definitely one of the better skills to use in the game if you want to use fire damage. Now, the Axe of Godric, I think, is going to be better as a weapon if you don't include this skill, because it is a great axe, so it's gonna have a nice moveset. Actually does get a pretty unique heavy attack with a nice horizontal swipe. Although the Crescent Moon Axe also gets the exact same moveset, and that one can just be infused with different scalings and with a better weapon skill, because this weapon is just going to get a C scaling in both strength and dexterity, so it's not gonna have any synergy with spells. Your damage isn't going to be that high. And its weapon skill, I command the nil, is just not going to be that high damaging at all. It has like a longer animation, it's only really meant for close range combat. The high primer is okay and it can stagger enemies nicely. I just wish it did a lot more damage, especially for like the first two initial slamming attacks. Because when you do the entire combo and actually hit with all three attacks and hit with that final slam, it actually can do some nice damage. But to get to that final slam, you basically don't have to spend like 10 whole seconds just slamming the weapon into the ground. So yeah, for me, I don't really consider this one to be that useful. The Remembrance of the Natural Born, which is acquired of Astel. This one gives you the option of either Ash of War, Waves of Darkness, or the weapon Bastard Stars, which is a flail. Now this Remembrance, I'd put it higher on the list in terms of importance of duplicating. If the Bastard Stars wasn't just directly outclassed by the Wing of Estelle, if the Wing of Estelle didn't exist, the Bastard Stars would be an amazing weapon to have because it gets a decent intelligence scaling. Its weapon skill, Nebula, can output so much damage, get nice range, really good stance damage. It just gets a lot of things going for it. But the Wing of Estelle is just going to be better because it's cheaper, you can fire it quicker, more stance damage, more potential damage. It's heavy attack is a projectile that does even more stance damage. And obviously it's a curved sword, which is going to be a lot better than having a flail. 
because flails have one of the worst movesets in the entire game, especially with those charged heavy attacks. They're just incredibly slow. So yes, I'm going to go with the Waves of Darkness. I think this one is just going to be the better option. Now this Ash War is kind of like a reskinned version of Earthshaker. You like slam the weapon into the ground, does a little AOE, then you can do like a follow-up swing. But the benefit of Waves of Darkness is that it actually does this very large AOE attack, does a bunch of magic damage in a very large radius, and can hit like three or four times. Now what I like to pair this Ash of War alongside with would be cold builds. A frost-based infusion is going to work nicely because those aftershock effects that do that magic damage also can help proc frost as well if you do have a cold infusion. And it can end up being a very solid damaging weapon skill that is also very fun to use. Now you can only equip this thing on larger weapons like great hammers, great spears, colossal swords. But if you find one of those weapons that you do like, this is going to be an amazing skill to have. The Remembrance of the Blood Lord, which is acquired off Moog, gives you the option of Mogwin Sacred Spear or the Blood Boon Incantation. Now, obviously, Mogwin Sacred Spear is going to be the way to go here. This is one of the best weapons in the entire game. It's a great spear that gets amazing range, amazing scalings, really good damage. Its weapon skill just decimates enemies. This thing could just be one of the highest damaging weapon skills in the entire game. It does it in an AoE and it procs bleed incredibly quickly. Yeah, it's just amazing. But this Remembrance is still going to get higher on my list in terms of importance of duplicating because Blood Boon is actually pretty good. Definitely one of the more underrated incantations in the game. This thing kind of took the place of Swarm of Flies after Swarm of Flies got nerfed because the way to use this incantation is to throw the projectile at the ground because it leaves a pool of blood flame of which when enemies stand inside of it or stand on top of it, they'll take a bunch of blood loss build up and actually can proc bleed pretty quickly and also do some nice damage over time too. But my favorite part about this skill is that it only consumes 13 FP. So for 13 FP and being able to proc bleed this quickly, and not have that high of a requirement, I think it's pretty solid to have. Now it's obviously not going to proc bleed as quick as some like weapons in this game. And using bleed projectiles at a distance means that you can't really benefit off using the Lord of Blood Exaltation or the White Mask, but bleed is still going to be amazing either way. The Remembrance of Horolu, which is acquired off Horolu or Godfrey himself, does give you the option of either the Axe of Godfrey or Horolu's Earthshaker Ash of War. Now both of these options are pretty solid. I would probably rather go with a Horolu's Earthshaker Ash of War because this is more universal and any type of strength build, you could just benefit of using it. This actually does a really large AOE attack. You get some nice hype armor in the meantime to where you're not going to get staggered that much. You also get the option of a follow-up attack and hitting with the entire combo, you could do upwards of 55 stance damage, which is actually really good to have. And the fact that you can do it in a large AOE is actually incredible. And it doesn't really consume much FP as well, only 16 FP for either part. And being that it scales primarily off strength, it doesn't really matter what build that you go with. It doesn't scale off AR. You can put this thing on a random dagger and get just as much damage as if you put this thing on like a giant crusher. So if you're using like a shorter range strength based weapon that doesn't really stagger very well, whether it be like a dagger, straight sword, curved sword, and you feel like you're lacking an AOE option that can do some high stance damage, this is probably going to be your best option. Now I do have this remembrance as number five on my list in terms of importance of duplication because the alternative option in Axe of Godfrey is also not that bad. I still wish it was a lot better because it is a colossal sword that does only get a C scaling in strength. I kind of wish it was like an A or an S scaling. I'd probably like it a lot more, but it still is very good because its weapon skill, Regal Roar, does actually do this nice AOE attack and it turns your heavy attacks some high damaging machines, especially if you don't have them fully charged. Just using like the regular uncharged version, this attack can come out really fast and actually do some nice damage. You also get some hype armor in the meantime too. And throughout the duration of the buff, you just get more damage and you can pair this alongside the raw medallion to just further enhance your damage. Now still it's going to be a colossal weapon, so it's going to have higher requirements. It's going to weigh a whole bunch. The light attack combo and the rolling attacks are not going to be that good, but it still is a nice weapon to have. The Remembrance of the Star Scourge, which you acquire off killing Radan, does net you either the Star Scourge Greatsword or the Lion Greatsbow. Now my pick would go with the Star Scourge Greatsword. It's a colossal sword that can be dual wielded when two-handed, meaning that you actually don't have to level up a second weapon and also don't have to spec into much endurance to like bear the weight of that second weapon too. Now the trade-off being is that when you do two-handed, it doesn't really improve your strength scaling. So you can't really like lower the requirements or improve your damage much. But power stancing is still always going to be really good. But the best thing about this weapon is going to be its skill, Star Caller Cry. For 20 FP, you do this like insane like sucking attack that can do some nice damage and actually go really far. And for an additional 20 FP, you get this follow-up slamming attack that can just do colossal damage and also a very large AOE, and you get a whole bunch of hype armor throughout the animation, so it's not like you're really going to get staggered much. But yeah, being that this thing has such a large AOE, it just makes it very good in most situations in the game, because you can treat it as a projectile, or a way to just hit multiple enemies at once. But the Lion's Great Bow is also going to be a very solid pick too. Now unfortunately for bows and great bows, they don't really get that good of scalings, so your total overall damage can be limited. But with the Lion's Great Bow, this thing's skill can rain a whole bunch of great arrows from the sky, 
which can just absolutely decimate larger bosses. Even against smaller enemies, it can still perform nicely. It can stun lock them pretty well. Now, just using the regular bow by itself, it's still going to do some nice damage. It's not going to do as much as the Golem's Great Bow, but unlike that one, this one requires Somber Stones. You don't have to farm for it. It just does really good damage right off the bat. So this weapon is probably a bit more situational than it is going to be like a primary based option. The Remembrance of the Rot Goddess, which is acquired off Millennia, it nets you either the Hand of Millennia or the Scarlet Aeonia Incantation. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I like both of these options the exact same. So whether or not you have a Dexterity build or a Faith build is going to determine which one that you actually do go with. If you have a Dexterity build and you want to use another Katana, the Hand of Millennia is very nice, has a second most range out of all the Katanas. Its weapon skill can be very high damaging for not consuming much FP, can stun lock smaller types of enemies. Uh, the unfortunate thing about the weapon skill is that it does consume a lot of stamina. You can get staggered out of it pretty quickly because you don't really get much hyper armor. And also for a katana that does bleed, it doesn't really proc bleed that quickly either because it doesn't get an arcane scaling. You only get a dexterity scaling of which it does get a decent dexterity scaling, although it could be higher, especially with its very high dexterity requirement. So yeah, like this weapon should have been a lot better than what it was because, you know, you acquire it off millennia. This thing should be like one of the best weapons in the entire game. But unfortunately, it's not even the best katana. And as for Scarlet Aeonia, this one has also a very decent incantation. It's probably the best way to proc Scarlet Rot in the entire game. And it actually does proc a beefed up version of Scarlet Rot. Most Scarlet Rot sources only end up doing about 15% damage over time, over that 90 seconds. Whereas Scarlet Aeonia can do upwards of 30% damage, which doing that amount of damage over 90 seconds is obviously insane. And with how fast that it does proc the Scarlet Rot, you just use it right at the beginning of the fight and then switch back to your other types of incantations. Now it isn't going to be without fault. It does take up three whole slots. It is going to be like somewhat of a longer animation that you're basically going to get hit every single time that you use it. But it still is worth it because being able to proc Scarlet Rot with a Faith type build is obviously going to be really useful. But if you do plan on respecking your character and changing up your build, I think this might be one of the more important ones to try and duplicate. The Remembrance of the Black Blade, which is acquired off Malekith, you get either Malekith's Black Blade or the Black Blade Incantation. And both of these are actually very good. The reason why I have this at number two on my list in terms of importance of duplication, because you can benefit of using both in the exact same build, because they both do holy damage, they both scale of faith, they both are pretty expensive, and they both do that same amazing destined death damage over time effect, as well as just taking 10% of their maximum health away. Now you might think, why would I duplicate them when I can just use one or the other? And the reason being is because they both actually stack. The destined death damage over time effects and the flat 10% health debuff actually stack with one another. So it's not like you have to use one or the other. You can go ahead and use both. Now if I were to pick, I'd probably go with the Black Blade Incantation because obviously it's a spell so you can use it with many different types of builds. Whereas Malika's Black Blade, you're kind of just committing to using that one particular weapon. Of which it is a still a pretty decent weapon. You get a nice strength and faith based scaling. It's a colossal sword, so it gets an okay moveset. Now the downside of it is that it does do holy damage, which a lot of enemies in this game are very resist to. So if you're gonna go with a faith type build, there's probably other options that are just going to be better. But its weapon skill is just going to be amazing and it just decimates enemies with larger amounts of health because that destined death effect is just going to do a bunch of damage every time. It isn't going to be like the easiest thing to pull off because it does consume 40 FP and it does have a longer animation. So you're probably going to get hit more times than not when you do use this thing. But you're probably going to win that trade because it does amazing damage. Now the Black Blade spell actually does serve as a projectile. It actually does go really far, but hitting with it at point blank range can make it do even more damage. And it does get the option of a follow-up attack, of which the attack does get even more hype armor, and it could just output even more damage. But yeah, the entire combo is pretty expensive. You're using upwards of 50 FP, but just like Malika's Black Blade, it can just melt enemies. So yeah, both are just amazing options to have. Although due to the fact that they're doing holy damage and are pretty expensive, means they're probably a little bit more situational. The Elden Remembrance of what you acquire off the Elden Beast, I consider it to be the most important remembrance to duplicate because both options, the Maracus Hammer and the Sacred Relic Sword are really good. And for me personally, I would probably go with the Sacred Relic Sword as the better option. Although Maracus Hammer is my favorite weapon in the entire game, the Sacred Relic Sword is just an absolute machine. This thing has a pretty decent dexterity and faith based scaling. It does mainly do physical damage compared to its holy damage counterpart, which obviously is going to be really good because holy damage is just not that good in this game. It also does get a 110 crit multiplier. So if you are the spamming those charged heavy attacks to get the posture break, your critical attack is just going to be doing even more damage. But yeah, the best thing about the weapon is going to be its skill Wave of Gold, which does consume 40 FP and a whole bunch of stamina, but this skill is just amazing. I definitely recommend pairing it alongside some FP reducing types of items because if you spam this thing, you can have one of the easiest playthroughs that you've ever had in your entire life. Because this projectile goes insanely far 
in such a wide AoE that you can just sit at the back of the map and just clear out the entire room. And it's not like the damage is even bad. The damage is actually really good. But the Maracus Hammer is also amazing too. It's another weapon that does get some split physical and holy damage, although it is going to be doing more physical damage. It does get a much better strength scaling compared to its faith scaling. So I recommend just going all into strength because unlike the Sacred Relic Sword, its weapon skill doesn't just scale off faith, it scales off your attack rating. So going into whatever is going to boost the damage of the weapon itself is also going to boost the damage of the weapon skill. Of which this weapon skill, Gold Breaker, is so fun to use and it is actually really powerful. You basically become airborne and when you're airborne you just get like infinite hyper armor. You're not going to get staggered a single time, come crashing to the ground, do this large AoE that does some very nice damage, send enemies flying up into the air. And if you hit with this thing at point blank range, this thing can actually do more stance damage than a great sword with lion's claw. It can do that much stance damage and it's just a regular hammer, which they're probably not going to have the best movesets, but they obviously get really good stance damage as a trade-off. So yeah, being able to do really high amounts of damage, really high amounts of stance damage in a nice AoE, it's obviously going to be extremely beneficial. And I consider both of these weapons to be in the S tier, despite them being holy damage, they're still S tier weapons. Anyway, that concludes the list. As always, let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe because I do have a bunch more videos coming along the way. I think my next one is going to be ranking all of the Ashes of War from worst to best. It's not the unique skills, it's just going to be the Ashes of War. I'll probably do that one at a later date. So definitely do subscribe for that too. And also follow me on Twitch because I am live every day doing a bunch of random challenge runs. But yeah, catch you guys around. Bye.